All right, I'm here with a very talented musical duo by the name of Dr. Seahorse. How are you guys? Pretty good, awesome. pretty good. Good. Awesome. Yeah, I just came back from a performance. How was it? It was, it was, um, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, <laughs> we gave it our all. Yeah. That's nice. And uh, how did you guys come together? Um, well, Mark over here, um, he's a producer and drummer, and I'm a singer songwriter, and um, we've both been doing music individually, both in San Diego, and so we knew of each other, and um, uh, we collaborated on a remix. He remi remixed a song of mine, and um, I don't know, we did, eventually we just started doing more and more work together, not really making it turn into a band until later on. It kind of was an accidental thing. We just started working together, and we realized this is, this is a better idea than we thought, and so we just kind of kept moving forward into it until it developed into this. Nice. And where does the name Dr. Seahorse come from? It's a, a song I wrote um, a few years ago called Dr. Seahorse, and um, people tend to remember the name of the song, and so I thought, I'm trying to think of a catchy you know, band name that people just don't seem to forget, and people mm -hmm. don't seem to forget that. Okay. You guys are in, you're not into aquatic things, or... No, it's nothing literal about. Yeah, it it just is quirky and different, and that's yeah. what we just aim to be. So yeah. By the way, this is our second time doing the interview, so this is like all scripted. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, but uh, no fascination with seahorses. It just came about like no. I love seahorses, yeah. but that's not no sexual fascination with seahorses or not at all. Yeah, not, not that I know. Of. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> uh, but anyways, um, how did you start out um, as far as learning music yourself? I mean, did you start out with private lessons or? I mean. Yeah, I, t I took private lessons. I'm a drummer first, mm -hmm. um, and then I, I, I've done a lot of that. And then I, um, I've never studied in school or anything. Um, I was really involved with uh, marching band and drum lines, and that's kind of where I got my big start in drumming. Um, and understood music a lot in, in marching band stuff. And then I just took it from there. Okay. Yeah. Well, what about you? For me, I grew up in like a, an all-black gospel church. Oh. And so I, I kind of learned a lot of soulful singing mm -hmm. from that. And then from there, went to a school where there was just a bunch of rockers and mm -hmm. a lot of guitar players. And so I went from like that to like rock music. Mm -hmm. And then um, as a bass player, really shy person, never would let anybody hear me sing, uh -huh. let alone dance in front of people. And then uh, it wasn't until later on in my senior year that I finally opened my mouth and I sang the national anthem and uh -huh. started getting voice lessons and stuff like that. So okay. I took a lot of lessons. And then that the more I took, the more I got confident. And the more experience I got, the more confidence I got. And how would you describe your sound musically? Like, what, what would you describe your genre as? I would say... Indie, um, electronic, and when I say, use the word indie, I mean just, I think when people hear electronic, they think dance, and we're not at all necessarily dance. I write most of these songs on guitar, uh -huh. and then go to Mark's house, and then he turns them into kind of electronic, explosive expressions of those songs, and, um, you know, and I sing with soul, and and uh, just with all our, his background, and anything from Devo to Bjork to different things like that, all his different influences and all my different influences that seem to don't even match when we stick them together. It's kind of a uh -huh. good brew of, of things. I think there's an underlined hip-hop genre in what we do because we both have a lot of background in in gospel, hip-hop, rap. Like, I grew up listening to N.W.A. and Ice Cube and Ice-T, oh, and okay. like that was kind of what I listened to a lot, and classical music. <laughs> so... Uh, the, the message is coming from classical music and the message is coming from gangster rap, per se. Do you mix that all together and put that into your music? Yeah, I, I think it's there. Like, okay. I, could point, I could point it out, I think. Wow. I, <laughs> I think. That's yeah, no, 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 I really cool. do. It's, it's cool. Like, it's, uh, it's like violins and shooting people, like, all I, at the same time. I have time. lots of strings, <laughs> st string arrangements in the music. Yeah. You just don't always hear it because it doesn't yeah. come across as a classical tune. So you don't notice it, but yeah. it's it's really in there. Yeah. And what's your fan base like? How would you describe your fan base as far as a gender or age? I mean, do you have a specific demographic that you think appeals to you, like females, for instance? I mean, oh man, I wouldn't say. I forget the last time. You can actually find this out by going on Facebook. You can okay. kind of like find that out. But um, 
college age, right? I, mean, I say it's, you know, wherever we find ourselves mm -hmm. playing, um, you know, that'll start to grow. And so this year it's full of, you know, a lot of colleges is mm -hmm. the majority of where we're playing. And so then we'll start to see that grow. But it's pretty much wherever we can get an in for our music, people are, tend to be sold. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say like, you know, everyone, but a big, you know, a big majority. I've played music for years and so I know how it feels to mm -hmm. win over a crowd. And um, I've never felt like with Seahorse, it just feels like you can almost everyone in some fashion, they like an aspect of mm -hmm. it and something and they get sold to just, I think just because we're both just fully abandoned. Mm -hmm. And like I said on the stage today, like we're so not here to just impress anybody. Like mm -hmm. I think we're just, we're old enough where we're comfortable with ourselves and we're just here to have fun, and if you want to join us, join us, you know, type of thing. Okay. Now, I noticed um, after your show, uh, you had a, a lot of members of the female species taking uh, pictures, and I was just wondering, <laughs> do, I, well, yeah, I call them female species because I don't know anything about them, <laughs> um, but, like, do you um, have a lot of that after your show? I mean, and if you do, do you know how to control it, or do you take, I mean, do you admit to taking advantage of it sometimes, or, like, how, how, how does that, I mean, if you do, that's we, fine. We just, take a lot of pictures, you know. but we don't take advantage of um, No, we're of both, the we're both married. Yeah. Have you, oh, we're okay. both married, oh, okay. and uh, he's oh, been nice. married for quite a few years, and uh, okay. he even has a kid. Now. Okay. How can, you balance, how can you balance marriage, uh, having a kid, with uh, a career like this? Because it can be tough, you know. Absolutely, you, yeah. yeah. Well, a lot of awesome communication <laughs> and yeah. staying tight with your family. Um, we don't travel that much, you know, so it's not like we're gone all the time. We just have little stints. So yeah, we'll be gone for that's how you two day things or four day things. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Okay. It's a balance. It's oh. challenging. It's not easy, but oh. I mean, you, know, you do what you can. We love what we do and, uh, and we've, we were both full-time musicians before we got married. <laughs> so, it, you know, we knew what, we were all getting into it wasn't just like okay. a sudden career change uh, have you ever got to a point uh, with within a conversation with your wife where you got too ahead of yourselves with your career you just thought you were the crap like oh my god dr seahorse you can float in my water anytime like have you ever gotten <laughs> to that point or have you guys always been down to earth you know you you know the difference between star and person we're, who we're needs not, to be normal we're not <laughs> superstars we're not okay. celebrities we know it we've been doing this so long we know that we yeah. have a long way to go i think it's, i think too if i think an artist that's like i think it's an overnight success uh, tends to probably be able to ha you know they can jump ahead of themselves because who wouldn't mm -hmm. you know if if all of a sudden you just get this instant fame instant anything you, uh, your, your mind doesn't know how to keep up with that uh -huh. and so you kind of let it get to your head and you don't even know what's what the where the ground is uh -huh. I think for us, we've been carrying gear, coming, you know, like today, you know, just the, the sound equipment with issues and having to set all this up. There's like such a reality to this thing that we know so well and that we've been doing for so long that um, I don't feel like, you know, we don't really get the superstar treatment, so we don't really yeah. feel like superstars. What, what you, are, are you achieving for that someday? Like a Hollywood or New York, just big time music? I would Sensation. say that we would take it, but we're not like biting the hook per se. Okay. Um, and I know because just there's too many statistics that say you know for every you know million bands that get signed, only one of them uh -huh. makes it big. And usually when their labels are investing into those label things, it's only it's like U twos and Coldplay's that are supporting uh -huh. the whole labels. It's not all little guys. Uh -huh. You can be signed to a big label and no one shows up to your show. Uh -huh. Or you can be the one kid on YouTube that has a million hits and his show sold out, but he's not even signed. Oh. And so it's just a different world now than it used to be. And there's almost like some form of fame. For It's like, what do they say? There used to be a thousand bands with a million fans. Oh. And now there is... Now, there used to be... Yeah, there used to be a thousand bands with a million fans. And oh. now there's a million bands with a thousand fans. Oh, so okay. we definitely have... Yeah. We definitely are doing well because we have well over a thousand fans. Uh -huh. And so I think we're doing very well, but I think that's kind of the new shift that has happened okay. since computers came out. There's just too much information sure. to chew on. And, and we think that there's a lot of artists out there, but there's really not a lot of huge superstars oh. nowadays. And um, how would you compare yourself, uh, you versus what's out there in the commercial mainstream? Like uh, mm -hmm. any similarities, any differences as far as your taste and what's usually heard on the radio? Like right. how, how would you describe it? I, th I think we do have similarities in that we we like to write things that are like catchy and hooky in some ways. We want people to kind of mm. 
um, grasp onto our music pretty quickly, which mm. is what pop music generally is. Mm. They're just trying to get a, a catchy hook and tune. So we have that, but we don't we don't have a lot of standard things, you know, like just regular drums, bass, guitars, you know, like we don't have typical things like that, mm -hmm. which definitely makes us stand out. We're just two guys with like drums that I'm playing standing up, you know. So I have drums like the mainstream world, but I'm not playing them like they do. Okay. That's that's for me. Yeah, and I would say a lot of lot um, like content wise for most of the J Lows or all those things, they're writing for radio. They're writing for club. Um, we're not playing a lot of not not a da not a lot of dance clubs. Mm -hmm. Even our music, it's like really easy to move to, but it's not necessarily dance music at all. And so, um, where our music finds itself. I don't know, just just people get into it, kind of finds itself within individuals and people's hearts, but it doesn't necessarily find itself in like mainstream facets of, you know, markets, um, both either radio or club, you know, it's kind of not, not really found there. Okay. kind of just on the internet and things like that, you know. Yeah, it's understandable. Um, now we do a segment at the end of every interview where um, I give my interviewees odd favorites, and these are favorites that would not normally be axed. Um, so uh, the odd favorite that I uh, had designed for you guys has to do with a certain age group that may not be into your music so much. So what I have to ask to, to you is uh, what was your favorite thing, what, what would be your favorite thing to say to a senior citizen who might not get your music, who might not understand, uh, and uh, who, you might wanna un who you might wanna make understand right. your, your music and how it could be as great as say uh that bebop guy from 1948 right whoever that guy's name is so yeah yeah uh, what would you say to that senior citizen i think i would um tell them i totally understand mm -hmm. um i know that our younger day and age we were we we move at a lot quicker pace than they used to back in the day mm -hmm. we got our laptops open with our phones open with our tvs on and our music at dance music boom boom at like yeah. 130 beats per minute and so everything's just moving very very quick and so the soundtrack to our lives is a lot quicker and snappier than um, things used to be back in the day people used to take their sweet time with things things weren't necessarily processed just milk and the cow yeah. sunrise sunset you know just nat king cole singing your singing his buttery voice yeah. having you go to sleep and i think i think that music was is was very graceful and i think it matched their time and I think I, you know, we have something to learn from them okay. that uh, that I appreciate. So I would, I would, I would approach them in that kind of way, letting them know that I appreciate them and I totally understand where they're coming from. Yeah, and their music is and awesome with full of talent. Oh, of course, it's yeah. it's yeah. it takes. I think it takes way more of a genius to pull pull you know pull off what they. Not that it doesn't take any talent now, but I just think we're a lot of us are copying each other now. Yeah. Back then, I mean, you just had to be a really Original. a ranger and. Yeah. And a vo as a vocalist, you had no processing or auto tune. So just on every level, you didn't have a crutch along the way. You just had to be the bands. It was like you know counting off, and everyone had to play together. And so I think, um, yeah, it's just it's just different. So I have much respect. Yeah, I, I, totally. If they say they don't like me, I wouldn't even try to talk them into it. Yeah. <laughs> I just say, yeah. you know, keep listening to what you're listening to. It's way better than, yeah. than our music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, where can people find you, like, as far as websites, and how can people keep in touch with you if they want to be exposed to more of your music? I would just say Google our name, Dr. Seahorse, and, you know, okay. you'll get our, you know, our website, which I think is just drseahorse.com, and our Facebook, which is, like, Facebook slash Dr. Seahorse, so you'll get all those things by just Googling us. Okay. Well, and where are you performing next? We are in North Carolina. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Uh, but have you been to that state before, or? Never? Uh, Never. No, no, no. Oh, it should be interesting. There. Yeah, I hear it's <laughs> it's pretty hot down there. Could be, but yeah. probably not right now in February, right? Or yeah. what, what, what month are we in? Uh, February. Yeah, okay. Right. It doesn't right. seem like it, but we are already I know. in February. <laughs> yeah. Cold, but it's yeah. Good. Surprising snow today. Yeah. But um, yeah, I would like to thank you guys for uh, you know coming on and um, you know you're very great and I wish you the best of luck, thank best you. of success. Thank you. And um, is there a way like I can get your music to play on the show or? Yes. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Do you have like a copy, or or can I find it online? Yeah. I can find it online. Yeah, you can actually go to our website and okay. um, go to the store, and I think you're you're able to download my record for free. Oh, nice. 
Okay. Well, yeah, thank you guys so much, and uh, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. All right, it's Dr. Seahorse, everybody.